Hey guys, I'm Angela and welcome back to Hobby Night. This week I had a grand plan for what Hobby Night was going to host because we were going to have a Death Guard Codex and there was going to be a new Death Guard character mini that I was going to paint up. But obviously Grandfather Nurgle deemed us unworthy of that. But fear not because I have a plan. I still want to do something for my Death Guard and we've been seeing some uh, previewed data sheets because of Japan for some of the new demon engines, for the bloat drones specifically. And I've never painted any of my bloat drones despite owning, I think, almost four of them. So I thought today, why not go ahead and get a bloat drone prepped for my army because they're looking spicy and I still want to paint something Death Guard. So without further ado, let's jump into what paints we'll be using. Today's paints are the base paint, Gracier, the Contrast Paints Skeleton Horde, Black Templar, Plague Bearer's Flesh, Militarum Green, Iodin Yellow, Blood Angels Red, Griff Hound Orange, Magos Purple, Volupus Pink, the Technical Paint, Nurgle's Rot. And Armageddon Dust. As well as the Dry Paint, Skink Blue. And then the shades, Reichland Flesh Shade. And Agras Earthshade. To begin, I started by priming the entire miniature using Gracier Spray Primer. You could use Wraithbone if you wanted as well. I do actually do a mix of both Wraithbone and Gracier on my Death Guard minis, but for this one, I decided to go with Gracier just because it was the first can I grabbed. We're actually going to begin this painting tutorial with the base because normally I put this off till the end and I get impatient and I really just want that texture paint to dry as quick as possible. Well, if I start with the base, that means that it'll dry as quickly as possible because by the time I need to come back to it, it'll be good to go and I can just apply my shade and that'll dry much, much faster. So for that, we're going to apply Armageddon dust over the entire base and just set it aside until we need it next. Now it's time to actually start with the bloat drone. I'm going to begin by taking some Astra Militarum green paint and applying this to all of the armor pieces, which is pretty typical for what I like to do when I'm starting my miniatures. I do this because it's one of the largest area, obviously. It has some of the more recessed areas and I figured trying to paint the belly when the green is already done would be easier than trying to do it the reverse way and risk getting all that green on what I'm going to be doing for the belly color. So to keep it simple, I went with this first and I think it worked pretty well. I got everything that I needed to and I was able to just use a big brush because I'll be doing a cleanup stage later and so being a little bit messy here is not as big of a deal. Next, I'm going to move on to painting Black Templar on all of the weapon bits because that's just what I do for my Death Guard. It's a particular color scheme that I picked out and decided on to just have a consistent thematic thing through all of my army that was specific to me. And I really like it. And this is sort of the foundation of what that color is actually going to look like because we're not just going to leave it black or anything. I also am doing the black now because much like the green, I don't really care if I get this in too many places. I don't need to be super clean with the layering of the paint because I'm going to have a cleanup stage later. So it doesn't really matter if I'm super messy with this. Plus there's not that much that this dark color needs to go on. So it's pretty quick and simple. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Well, while you're here, don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. It's now time for my first cleanup stage. This is probably going to be the most time consuming one of these that I do just because the first two colors I was intentionally not clean. And now I want to make sure that my miniature is tidied up so that all my other colors don't have splotchiness of green and black underneath them. So we take our time, make sure to clean up every little bit and area, making sure to really spin the miniature and find all of the various edges that you want to be a different color and cleaning those up so that they are primed back up with gray sear. Now that the mini is all cleaned up and looking spectacular, 
I think it's time to start moving on to the fleshy bits. I want to first work on the belly and the underside. I have a particular plan for this. You might have seen it in my blight hauler video where I'm going to use a mix of uh, plague bearer flesh as well as magos purple and a wet blend technique to sort of get this goopy bruised flesh look. So we're going to start by putting the plague bearer flesh dripping down uh, from those grates that are on his uh, backside and having that sort of flow down the miniature. We're going to enhance this a little bit later on potentially with some stuff. We'll see what that comes to later. But for right now, we're going to have that down. And then while it's still wet, we want to take our Magos purple and go ahead and blend that in along the edges. This is going to give us sort of a blended mixed look, but still have distinctive colors so that we get this nice gradation of color. I really like this technique. It does take a little bit of time and you definitely want to go back and reapply certain colors to get a better vibrancy once things have started to dry a little bit more and you've got the foundation of what your wet blend pattern essentially is going to look like. So after it's dried, I went back over with both the Plague Bearer Flesh and the Magos Purple to deepen some of the colors. After the belly is done and dry, we're going to do a second cleanup stage. This one doesn't take quite as long. Really, we're just trying to clean up any of the places where we got those last two colors that we used on places we didn't want it, mainly those rivets that go around the belly that are needing to be orange later. So we clean those up and it's looking good. This next section is the part of the paintings that definitely took the longest. Um, we're going to do the orange now. This is the trim color that I use for all of my Death Guard, and I really like the contrast of it between the Astra Militarum green and this sort of more bright, saturated orange color tone that you get with the Griff Hounds orange. This is mostly time consuming just because there are lots of little fiddly bits that you need to go over and make sure that you hit. And there's a lot of different angles to hit them from because you've got all those spikes on the trim and everything. But after a decent while, you get it all done and it's looking fantastic. This is when the miniature really starts to come together. The belly's done, the trim is done, and the foundation of the armor is on there. And even your weapons are partially covered already. And so it's really starting to come together and I really, just enjoy this color scheme and painting Death Guard is just so much fun for me. The next color that I'm going to be using is Vulpus Pink. I want to use this on all of the like droopy dangly bits that are hanging down from his belly. I, this is, I don't want him to be specifically bloody because you might think, oh, well, wouldn't you do red because the pink kind of blends into the Magos purple pretty closely. They do sort of blend together, but that's actually the reason I do the pink. I want that color to blend subtly into the bruised flesh of the belly, but still look like it's a alive and pumping with blood, but not specifically bloody because I don't really, that's not the look that I tend to go for my Death Guard. I want them to be bright pops of color and look drippy and goopy, but not specifically bloody. So the pink tone really works for that. And I like to do this on the tubing that looks like it has like intestines stretched around it because I mean, that's what it looks like and it works really well. For the cords that aren't covered in guts, we're going to go ahead and take a yacht in yellow and apply that all over them. It gives it more of a caution look. You know, yellow is often on caution tape. I wanted to give that sort of vibe of stay away from this. And it also helps break up the color and add a little bit of a differentiation there. And I just think that the Yacht in Yellow works really nicely with Griff Hound Orange and that pink. So it just is a nice blend, gives us some good contrast and allows us to play with our colors a bit more. It's time to come back to Plague Bearer's Flesh. We used it a little bit on the belly, but I wanna touch up a few places and add it to a little bit of the slimy bits that are connection points on this mini, as well as that nurgling that's stretched over the exhaust on one side of his uh, mower and everything. I wanted to have them be distinctly a different color, and so Plague Bearer Flesh works very well for that. For all of those spikes that we didn't paint orange, we're going to now apply Skeleton Horde to them because they're a little bit more organic. They look like bone protrusions and teeth. And so I wanted to go with that look, hence the Skeleton Horde. We're not gonna use much of Blood Angel's red, but I do want to use it to dot the eye that you can sort of see peeking through the slit on the armor of the Bloat Drones, well, his armor, and also on the tongue that is on one of the nurgling faces that's on the sigil on the front of his armor. It's not much, but it's just a little distinction that I like to add. 
At this point, I was looking at the miniature and going, okay, overall, I'm really happy with it, but the fans weren't quite doing it for me. I think that the green was not necessarily the best choice for what I wanted to do with it. So instead, what I decided to do is pull out Black Templar again, not worrying too much if it's super thin or thick, and just applying this over top of the green to basically give it, give it a dingy, dirty look. My thought process with it was, well, this thing is probably creating like a lot of pollution and smoke and grime, but it's going to be pulling that back through these fans and everything. So all of that soot and grossness is going to co be collected on the fan blades. Hence why I went back over it with black. I think it worked really well. It adds a little bit of a distinction. It breaks up the color a bit more without standing out super significantly, which is what I was worried would happen if I painted it in orange, because I did consider that as an option but decided against it overall. And I'm really pleased with the choice that I made here. We're coming back now to the base. For consistency's sake, I'm going to apply Agrath's Earthshade over top of the base because that's what I've done on all the rest of my Death Guard army. All right, the bloat drone is looking fantastic and I'm very pleased with where it's at, but there are still a few things that I want to do to it. First of which is applying Reichland's Flesh Shade over basically the entire thing. Um, we're going to specifically not necessarily care about getting it on the black portions because we're gonna be dry brushing those here in a minute, but everything else we're going to apply this paint over. This will just help unify everything and make sure that, especially on the green, any splotchiness of the paint is sort of smoothed down and unified. I really like using this particular tone over say Agras because I think it's a little too brown and I want a little bit of that almost reddish hue to maintain in this really like Agras worth works especially well with the Griffhound orange and the green and since those are my two primary colors it's just the shade that I prefer. For this next step, I wanted to test it before I actually applied it to my miniature because I'm using a technical paint that I've never actually used before. We're going to take some Nurgle's Rot and apply it to this poor unsuspecting orc boy that I've painted up using a couple of specific colors from my color palette for my Death Guard. And basically, I just wanna see what this paint looks like over top of these various colors because it will determine where I want to use this paint on my actual bloat drone. I also want to see exactly how it dries because I know it's going to be shiny to a certain extent because it is supposed to simulate slime, but I wanna see specifically how shiny, um, what its saturation level is at because I do want to make sure that it still goes with the bright vividness of my color palette. I don't want it to end up looking like too dulled or anything, but the end results are fantastic. I'm really liking what I'm seeing on the orc. So let's go ahead now and apply it to the bloat drone. I decided ultimately to apply this specifically to where I had the plague bearer, plague bearer flesh already on the miniature. I liked the way that it looked on that the most. It also, I think, helped the slime be a little bit more saturated in green, um, which I really enjoyed because, again, I wanted it to match the brightness of my overall color palette already. So we're going to take this and apply it to all of the Plague Bearer Flesh areas, specifically focusing and heavily putting it on where it's coming out of those grates. Because like I talked about earlier, the whole reason for the Plague Bearer Flesh being in those sections was to simulate, simulate slime falling down. And now I get that effect even better. I really like what this is doing. And I even add a little bit more once I'm finished. And we'll take a look at that when we wrap everything up. But for now, we have one final step left. And that step is to go ahead and apply Skink Blue as a dry brush over top all of the portions that we left black for our weapons. This is, again, something that I just decided to do on my miniatures, just on all of my Death Guard minis for just consistency sake and to really make them mine. I definitely recommend if you're ever painting something and you have the urge, you're like, I want to make this mine. Whatever it is, do it because I think it'll be cool and it'll make it yours. And that's what's important. If you like it, then that's awesome. I really like putting this blue on here. It not only helps break up my color, and but still keeping that bright pop, it adds a little bit of cool tone back into a otherwise very warm color palette. So for me, it just works really well, and I very much enjoy doing this. It's something that I try to do on all of, well, obviously I do it on all my Death Guard, but all the armies going forward, I try to do little touches like that that make it specifically mine. But with that, it's all finished and we're going to go ahead and attach them to the base and wrap this video up.
And here he is, my goopy little bug monster mower thing. And I love him. This little bloat drone guy was a huge blast to paint. And I'm really, really happy with how the Nurgle's Rot paint ended up working out on this. I think because of how much I like it um, and how well it just went onto the mini and everything, I think I'm going to go ahead and go back to my um, blight haulers that I had painted up earlier and apply the same technique to them because I think it's fine to add it over top of the varnish and everything because I really enjoy how this came out. My color scheme is one that I've worked with a lot. I really have gotten it kind of down pat and I love doing these bigger models in it because there's a lot more color variety that I can add to it. Like I get to use typically a lot more like yellows and the pinks and some of the purples and everything, which you don't always see on my Plague Marines, but on the big bloat drones and the other demon engines and such, I get to play with a lot more of my color palette. I get to add a lot of really cool, like gross techniques and everything to them, which I really enjoy and still work with my bright poppy sort of like pop of color theme for my death guard which is key to when i was a little nervous to try this uh the nurgle's rot and everything but i just mm, i'm very very pleased with this i can't wait to finally get the rules for this guy so I can see him in action and actually see what he's gonna be using and seeing if the mower was the correct choice to paint first or if I actually wanted to do the plague spitters, who knows? But I'll find out soon, hopefully, because we'll eventually get that codex. But until then, I'll be painting up some more of these guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching me paint up my bloat drone and trying out this new paint. I definitely enjoyed it myself and I'm going to be playing around with it a lot more. If you guys have liked this video and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe to the channel and feel free to share this if you enjoyed it and you want to show to your friends, hey, this is how you can paint your Death Guard or hey, you've got that demon engine. This might be a cool scheme or a thematic thing that you want to do for it. But anyways, I've been Angela. You've been watching Hobby Night. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time.